Hello humans, I'm Mr. King. Acid, bases, and salt topics. So first, definition. So what is acid? Remember, acid is proton donor. Whereas alkaline and base, it is proton acceptor. Okay, there are two types of acid, so-called strong acid and weak acid. So first, strong acid, okay, it means chemical substance that dissociate completely in water to produce high concentration of hydrogen ions. Whereas weak acid dissociate partially to produce low concentration of hydrogen ions. In terms of pH, okay, remember, you see, for strong acid, it is range from pH 1 to 3. Weak acid, pH 4 to 6. Then, followed by example, okay, remember, all inorganic acid, they are strong acid, like example, hydrochloric acid, HCl, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, nitric acid, HNO3, and all organic acid, they are weak acid, such as methanoic acid and ethanoic acid, yeah, together with a chemical formula as well. Alright, okay, next, alkaline. Same thing, there are two types of alkaline, strong alkaline and weak alkaline. Strong alkaline dissociate completely in water to produce high concentration of hydroxide ions, whereas weak alkaline dissociate partially to produce low concentration of hydroxide ions. In terms of pH, strong alkaline pH 11 to 14, whereas weak alkaline pH 8 to 10. Okay, in terms of example, remember all group 1, okay, all group 1 metals that form strong alkaline. See example, potassium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide. Okay, so this is the tips for you. Group 1, they form strong alkaline or bases. Whereas for weak alkaline, example, okay, calcium, magnesium, and one important example of so weak alkaline is aqueous ammonia. Okay, remember, ammonia it is an example of weak alkaline. Alright, next, oxide compound. Okay, first, basic oxide. Okay, remember, all basic oxide, they are metal oxide. Like example, potassium oxide, sodium oxide, and so on. Whereas, all acidic oxide, they are non-metal oxide. See, example, sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, and oxide of nitrogen. See, they are all non-metals. Okay, next one. M4 trioxide, can remember, M4 trioxide means substance that can react with both acid and alkaline. And you have to remember the examples of M4 trioxide, like example, aluminium oxide and zinc oxide. You have to remember these two. Next, continue, neutral oxide. Neutral oxide basically means substance that cannot react with both acid and alkaline. Okay, basically, it is the opposite of M4 trioxide. Okay. And the examples of neutral oxide is carbon monoxide. Okay, you have to remember the examples for both M4 trioxide and neutral oxide. Let's move on to the chemical reaction. Okay, you have to remember all the chemical reaction here. Like example, the first one, acid reacts with metal to form salt and hydrogen. Okay, followed by the chemical equation. And acid reacts with metal oxide to form salt and water. Acid with metal hydroxide to form salt and water. Acid with metal carbonate to form salt, water, and carbon dioxide. Then next, acid reacts with ammonia to form ammonium. So okay, this is very important. Okay, remember, acid reacts with ammonia to form only ammonium salt. Okay, this is super, super important. And then last one, alkaline reacts with ammonium salt to produce salt water and ammonia gas. Alright, okay, there is one more thing to take note. See, in the exam, they like to ask you about the observation. Okay, remember, the observation for gas it is always the same. See, like example, the observation for oxygen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, or ammonia. Okay, it is always colorless gas bubbles form. Okay, or so called effervescent. Alright, okay, next. Saturated solution. So define the term saturated solution. Okay, it is always a two marks question. So first point, uh, no more solute will be dissolved. Second point, at that given temperature. Alright, next, method to prepare insoluble salt. Okay, it is called precipitation. So before we go into the equation, okay, first let's go into the solubilities of salt in H2O. For example, 
Nitric means soluble, cross means insoluble. Alright, first one, nitrate salt. Remember, all nitrate salt, they are soluble salt. Like example, silver nitrate soluble, copper to nitrate soluble. Okay, all nitrate salt, they are soluble. And then next, chloride. All chloride salt, they are soluble except silver chloride and lead to chloride. So other than these two, they are all soluble. Next, sulfate. All sulfate salt, they are soluble salt other than lead to sulfate, calcium sulfate, and barium sulfate. Then, all oxide, hydroxide, and carbonate salt, they are all insoluble salt other than potassium, sodium, and ammonium. So basically, okay, all group 1 metal and ammonium salt, okay, they are always soluble. Alright, okay, remember this. Alright, okay, now let's go back to the precipitation reaction. You see, in order to produce insoluble salt, okay, the equation is soluble salt reacts with soluble salt to form insoluble salt and soluble salt. Like example, we would like to produce insoluble salt silver chloride. So in order to produce silver chloride insoluble salt, so both the soluble salt needs to contain the ions of the insoluble salt. Like example, one soluble salt contains silver ions, another one contains the chloride ions. Therefore, soluble silver salt, you can use silver nitrate because we know that all nitrate salt they are soluble. And next, potassium chloride soluble salt. So therefore, you see, it produces silver chloride which is the insoluble salt and potassium nitrate which is the soluble salt. Very easy, isn't it? Okay, next one. Preparation of soluble salt and insoluble salt. Alright, okay. Every single step stated here, okay, they are very important. Okay, you have to remember every single step here. So first, let's go to the preparation of soluble salt. So first one, add excess metal into the acid until it stops dissolving. So first, what is the purpose of adding in excess metal into the acid? Alright, this is important. Okay, so remember, it is to ensure all acid is fully reacted. Okay, then we filter out the excess metal and then we obtain the filtrate. And we heat the filtrate until crystallization point. Okay, the keywords crystallization point. Okay. Then we leave the solution to cool at room temperature to evaporate and it will slowly form crystal. So once crystal is formed, filtration is carried out okay, to filter out the crystal. Alright, okay, one more thing to take notes. Every time after you carry out filtration, okay, always follow by rinsing the crystal with distilled water and drying with filter paper. Okay, this is to wash away all the soluble impurities okay, uh, and dry the solid okay very important okay remember every time after you carry out filtration okay you rinse with distilled water and then you dry with filter paper all right next preparation of insoluble salt you see we know that in order to produce insoluble salt we need two soluble salt therefore you see first step mix and stir the two solution okay then it will produce precipitate then we filter out the precipitate same thing every time after you carry out filtration uh, we rinse the precipitate with distilled water to wash away the soluble impurities and then we dry with filter paper. Okay, next, chemical test. So, you have to remember the colors of all the indicators here. So, first one, Lima's paper. So, in acid, it is red in color. Neutral, no change. Alkaline, blue in color. Universal indicator in acid, red in color, neutral, green, and alkaline, purple. Methyl orange, okay, in neutral, it is orange in color. Acid, red in color, alkaline, yellow in color. Orange is the intermediate color. When it becomes acidic, it gets darker in color. When it becomes alkaline, it gets lighter in color. Okay, next, phenolphthalein. Okay, you have to make sure that you know how to spell the word phenolphthalein. So, phenolphthalein in alkaline, it is pink in color. When it turns neutral, it becomes colorless. And same, it is colorless in acid. Okay, so there is one thing to take notes. Remember, is it? Universal indicator it is not a suitable indicator to be used in titration. Why? This is because there is more than one color changes. So this is the answer, okay? Because there is more than one color changes. Like example, in neutral, okay, it can be light green in color, medium green, or dark green. So it is very hard to determine the endpoint. 
Yes, yeah, so therefore for titration, we always use methyl orange or phenolphthalein. Okay, last one, test for gases. So first, ammonia. Okay, remember, ammonia is an example of alkaline. Therefore, we can test ammonia with moist limus paper. And it turns from red to blue. Carbon dioxide, can we test with lime water and it turns cloudy. Chlorine, we test with moist limus paper and it gets bleached. Okay, this is because chlorine is an example of bleaching agent. Right, next, hydrogen. Okay, we test hydrogen gas with lighter or burning splinter and pop sound is produced. Oxygen gas, we test with glowing splinter and it relaxes. Okay, whereas for sulfur dioxide gas, okay, we test with acidified potassium manganese 7 solution and it turns from purple to colorless. Okay, remember, sulfur dioxide gas it is an example of reducing agent. Therefore, we test with oxidizing agent. Alright, okay, that's all. Alright, thanks. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you again. Bye.